In today's video, I'm going to take you through some features within Lightroom that are not really that well known, but I think you'll find really useful. So if you're watching this video, you probably already use Lightroom. Um, and I don't have to tell you just what an amazing application uh, it is. Um, I spend easily the majority of my time within Lightroom every week processing hundreds of images. So um, because I use it so often, in order to improve my processes and uh, increase the efficiency of my time, I've come up with a few uh, little tricks and, and hints on some features within Lightroom that are not that well known. And for some of these, there's no, you, you don't even, you can't even find a button, there's no menu. It's, um, it, they're executed with uh, specific keystrokes. And hopefully these are things that are gonna help you. Now this is not, th these are not features that um, are just for the sake of this video. These are things that I use on a, on a daily basis uh, to help increase the efficiency of my time. So hopefully this is something that's uh, going to be interesting and useful for yourself. Now, if you stick around till the end of the video, I do have some giveaways as well. So, uh, and there'll be details at the end of the video. So stick around for that. And uh, yeah, let's jump into Lightroom. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and the first tip is around resetting. Now we know that we can go in and uh, if we change something in an image as I'm doing in here, I'm just changing all sorts of uh, you know sliders and then I can always go back to the reset button on the bottom right hand corner and I can click that and it brings me back to that one point. But what if I don't want to reset um, all the sliders at the same time? Let's say that I, uh, let's say that I work on my exposure and I get the contrast and the highlight rights and you know all that sort of thing and now that I've done the exposure I'm going to go in there and uh, play around with the presence uh, which is the you know, clarity or I want to change the saturation and so forth then what I can do is um, I can hold down the, uh, the option key on a Mac or control key on a PC and you will notice that the headings for these groups here, these are all groups, right? So this is the tone group which contains all these different sliders. You've got presence for these sliders and then so forth. You've got your saturation and all the other ones. But let's say that I, I, I don't want to muck around with my exposure because my, I'm happy with the exposure. If I just want to uh, reset uh, the presence, and let's say that I've done some something really bad on the presence, I can hold on the option key and the heading here will change to reset for that particular group. So I can click on this one and it only resets these ones and it leaves all the other sliders intact. So that is tip number one when you just want to reset a particular group of sliders. Okay, on to tip number two, and this is about reviewing your image. Once you've finished editing your photo, if you wanna have a really good look at it without having anything else distracting from the image, you can hit the L key once. It will then dim out everything else that basically is not image. Um, and if you press the L key again, it will put it, it will just black out everything else. So it will only display um, if the image itself with a black border around that making it really really easy to uh, review the image because that's all you can see and there's nothing else distracting you. You press the L key one more time and the interface go, goes back to normal. The other thing you can do if um, if you don't like that you can also hit the tab key. If you hit the tab key once it gets rid of all of the uh, or basically all of the controls on the right and left side of the screen uh, so that it, the image will actually stretch out a little bit and use that, that extra real estate um, and uh, it will also make it a little bit easier to review the image. Hit the tab key again and uh, the menus come back. That is tip number two. Okay, on to tip number three. And tip number three is around the overlay mask. Now we know that we can use a brush uh, to be to go in and uh, let's say in this case I wanted to uh, do ex uh, increase the exposure of something. Let's say that I wanted to increase the exposure of uh, these particular posts in here. So what I can do is I can actually just paint on there and I can then go and erase the exposure as you can see in there. Now uh, the problem with that is that I am not seeing uh, like an exact boundary of where that exposure applies or, the, or that compensation applies. So one of the things you can do is hit the O key and then the O key, as you can see in here, if I'll just zoom in so you can have a look in here, 
um, it will show you exactly you'll see a red tint that will show you exactly where it is that I'm actually exposing so let's say for example that I wanted to do this post here I could just keep playing and trying to do that area there which means I can now tell that I'm not spilling onto the side where the netting and the water is and uh, so I hit the O key again and now when I increase the saturation it's only increasing the saturation of the post and not the water and if you look at this one here on the left you'll notice that I actually missed it a little bit there and I didn't hit just the post uh, I got the surrounding area as well so hitting the O key uh, uh, to turn it on and hitting the O key to turn it off is a really really useful tip so that is tip number three So in the last tip, I showed you how to use the mask overlay, which is by pressing the O, it allows you to see where you're painting with your brush. The thing is that um, if you are, um, let's start a new brush in here. And again, we're going to go and edit this post, uh, the post on the right hand side, let's say. Um, let's say that I start painting in there and I can see my mask overlay on there because it's red. So I can see that I'm, I'm within the boundaries of where I need to be. Uh, the thing is that every time I want to check it, I need to hit the O key turn it off, see how much it, it's gone up by. Um, so I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit more. Actually, I'm gonna crank it right up so that it's really visible to you. And then I can think, oh, well, I need a little bit more. So I'll go back in there again, I'll turn it back on and, and I'll keep going. And you can do that and you know turn the overlay on and off. Or what you can do, let's get rid of this, uh, let's get rid of that one there. I can turn on my second monitor. Now the second monitor is on the left hand side over here. You can click by just clicking the two um, and I've got mine set to one on one so that it matches the, the screen on, on the main image. But what it is is just a duplicate of your image and it allows me to turn the mask overlay on on one image but not the other one. So what I can actually see and I'm going to crank this uh, the exposure right up so that you can see it but as I'm painting on the right hand side you will see my mask overlay is on and you will see that on the left hand side it's not on but the changes are actually taking place in real life look I'll, what I'll do is I'll do this post as well here as well so you can see it so I'm painting over here on the right hand side image and now when I, when I let go have a look at the image on the left when I let go you will see the results so it just prevent it, it just really means that i don't have to go uh hitting the o key on and off to try and see what the effect of the all of the overlay is um, i can also uh, correct my overlay in here as well if i need to uh, and i can just see the result on the left hand side so this is really useful this is how i use it i'm sure that the second monitor has other uses but this is what i use it for Um, this is just a different way to use the sliders on the right hand side um, with, um, uh, with an additional function. That is, instead of just moving, say, the exposure uh, slider to the left or to the right to make the, the, the image darker or brighter, if you do that whilst you're holding the Option key on a Mac or Control on a PC, you will notice that the screen goes black. Now, if I try to increase the exposure to the right, you will notice that this is now showing me where my image is clipping. That is where it is just beyond white and I'm losing all detail in this. If I let go, you will notice that that is the actual railing, which makes sense because the railing is white. Now, if I do it, um, let me just bring this back down just a little bit and then I'm going to do the blacks. Uh, as I bring down the exposure, now it's the complete opposite, right? It's showing me the black areas in the image where it is that I'm losing detail in the shadows. Uh, and if I let go, you'll notice that that is all the posts underneath the pier. So let me reset this again. Uh, so again, you just it, this function works with a lot of the sliders. It only works with the ones that make sense. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to sort of show where you're adding contrast. So I can do that with the contrast, uh, uh, the, the contrast slider while I'm holding the option and nothing happens. Um, with uh, some of the other ones, for example, uh, it's uh, let's say that you want to do the sharpening one. Well, with the sharpening one, what it does is it actually turns the image to black and white because it is easier to see sharpening when it's applied on black and white. So let's say that I, I sharpen, that I'll just sharpen this to maximum. Uh, and then I will do my masking. And as I hold my masking, uh, or I slide masking while holding the option key, you will notice it's showing me the areas where it's actually applying, 
right? So this makes it really, really easy to be able to say, you know what, I only want to apply in these particular spots. So you'll notice in here, it's showing me the outlines. So if I move a little bit more to the right, it's just showing me, uh, it's really defining where in that image my changes are taking place. So that is tip number five, uh, and it's probably one of my favorite ones, and I use this all the time. Anyway, those are my tips that uh, I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you found those useful. Um, if you did like this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I am trying to increase the audience of this channel to, uh, so that I can continue bringing you videos like this one. So if you did like it, it would really help out if you subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment and uh, like the videos as well. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, I do have some giveaways. Uh, there are some uh, links that are placed in the uh, description of this video. One of those links, it takes you to a blog article which corresponds to this video. So all the tips that I went through in the video, um, they will also be in this blog article, only that the, they will be in more detail. And in fact, I go in through uh, a, a little more detail, but also discuss a few extra uh, tips in there as well. So make sure that you check that out. Uh, again, the link is in the description. There are also in there a cheat sheet that I put together again with my favorite keyboard shortcuts. Now, Lightroom has uh, probably hundreds of keyboard shortcuts and uh, I find it impossible to uh, to remember all of them. So what I've done is I've made my own cheat sheet that I use again on a day-to-day -day basis of all the keyboard shortcuts that I use. So you can download that as well. Link is also in the description. Uh, completely free as well and um, my latest uh, teal and orange preset for Lightroom as well again free so you can go in there and download and all the links for all of this stuff is going to be in the description so um, head over, over there and take a look um, guys again if you did like the video please give it a like subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video